Agora TV. The world is thinking. So Katrina is the best thing that ever happened to... I don't mean... That's not a joke. I mean, I, I want to pursue this idea. You know what's fascinating? And I have this conversation all the time. People say, you know what? This could never happen anywhere but New Orleans because of the hurricane. And I think, you know what? We had a crisis in New Orleans that was as bad before the hurricane. We have a crisis in Detroit and in Philadelphia and in any number of places right now that should merit the kind of action that was taken when that school board decided not to open the schools. And we're not, we're not acting, but we could. Yeah. But it really, I mean, you could make the case, let's just say that given the single most important measure of a city's health, long-term health, is its ability to properly educate its children. If New Orleans was utterly failing before and now has some signs of succeeding beyond other schools in the state of Louisiana, the city's better off for having Hurricane Katrina. It's sort of to your point before, though. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say that it's not. I mean, there's so many people who are in a worse condition because of the hurricane. You know what? Here's the other interesting thing about this. It's not quite, you know, it, it's, it's convenient to look at it as wait, wait, post-Hurricane wait, 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 Katrina, wait, wait, but wait, wait. here's the thing. No, 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 no. You can't get away with saying that. Yes, I can. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You're because, just, you're you know what, it yourself. might have happened without the hurricane. It might have. I mean, th- that, that was the interesting thing. There was so... But you just said it's not happening in Detroit and all these other places. But it, it didn't could. Have a hurricane. And you know what's different? And here, here, I swear, this is the difference and this is the whole point, right? Like, actually in New Orleans, there was a group of leaders who were absolutely bound and determined to fix this problem for kids. They existed and were working before the hurricane. In fact, I remember when the hurricane happened, my first thought was, oh no, like all the progress that these people had made, Mm -hmm. which we thought was going to be revolutionary, went down the drains because, of course, everyone was dealing with a huge natural disaster. Um, But those they, they revived and, and, and made dramatic change happen anyway. Who knows? I don't know what would have happened before the hurricane, but what I think is interesting, in most communities, you know, in most communities, we would have had a hurricane and we wouldn't have taken advantage of it to, mm-hmm. of the circumstances of the day to actually revolutionize the schools. We probably would not have thought, you know what, let's actually create a system of charters and Most certainly, because this is the problem and why we haven't moved the needle against this issue in an aggregate sense, we wouldn't have realized, you know what, that's not enough. Changing those laws is not going to do it. We better go out and find the leadership necessary and cultivate over time the leadership necessary to actually run transformational schools. But the lesson of New Orleans is surely that uh, the one of the best strategies for turning this around is blowing it up. I th- you could you could take that. that that's 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 one why are you, strategy. Why are you so reluctant to kind of? Why won't you I'm, be a I'm little thinking, bit of a revolutionary? I'm thinking and making sure. Why I can't agree you with be a little comments. bit of a revolutionary here? I mean, it's, it, it it distresses me sometimes that our revolutionaries have lost their revolutionariness, right? I mean, why... You know what? I have not lost my revolution. I wasn't accusing you. I've, I'm in Malcolm mode, not in Paul Holdengrabber mode, but... Um, you, know what confu- you know what concerns me is when, honestly, in order to create true, sustained, dramatic change, we need... The reason I'm so careful is it, it isn't about one simple thing, right? It's about yeah. doing a lot of different things right, and... I fear, I, I really believe that a lot of the problem right now is that we, we like to play like the, the blame game and, and the silver bullet lurching. And, and honestly, when you say, so the answer is to blow up the system, right? I have to think and think, do I, am I sure? Because I think, I think the solution, I, think it, I guess I think it depends. But, but I think the real key in New Orleans actually wasn't the hurricane. The real key was Leslie Jacobs, Paul Pasterak, and a whole generation of other people in New Orleans, most of whom, many of whom were Teach for America alums, who were deeply determined to address what they viewed as the single most unconscionable crisis mm-hmm. in our country, and, and who understood 
what you understand, especially after you've taught successfully in this context, which is there isn't a silver bullet to this. Yeah. You change a governance law, that's not going to fix the problem for our kids. So you had, a, you had a nucleus in place poised to take advantage of an opportunity. The opportunity was Katrina, and that allowed an awful lot of change to happen in a very short period of time. Yeah. 